Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? How's it going? It's a beautiful Friday afternoon, and there's been a lot of different things happening over here at my house. Sorry if there's a little bit of a background noise going on. I'm currently doing my laundry, and my dryer is pretty darn loud. But... There's a couple things that I wanted to talk about today, um, mainly, you know, how to get out of, you know, the little rut, you know, when you get kind of bored with your aquariums and get kind of tired of, you know, stuff and you just don't really feel like doing anything, you know, how, how do you like get out of that? So. Uh, that's something that I've been kind of thinking about and, uh, kind of struggling about myself even. So let me go ahead and post the StreamYard link in chat here. There we go. Let me pull up my video here on my computer so I can properly pin it. And then I can kind of scroll through chat a little easier and say hi to everybody specifically. But I do see you all kind of chatting away. There we go. Pin message. All right. So let me scroll up all the way to the top here. See, we got Shanna and Jason and Ricky and Steven and Sean and chat just jumped and then there's Mandy and Vinoski and Ruby, Michelle, Ricky de Oyas, Fishyman. Miss Muppet, John Oliver, Greg, Amber's in the house, and that's everybody. All right, cool. So how's everybody doing? Wow, 17 watches already. That's that's pretty good for me. Um, so let's see. One of the things that I like to do personally when it comes to getting myself kind of in a rut of just not wanting to do much of anything is I like to, you know, rescape my tanks and all that stuff. And, you know, I happen to rescape my 40 gallon breeder a couple weeks ago. Oh, well, maybe it was one week ago now. Uh, it feels like uh, time is relative, so let me uh, let's see. Camera, do, 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 phrasing back. All right. So, yeah, I like to rescape my tanks when I start to get bored with things, or especially bored with the tank. And uh, it's just. It's just something different to look at, you know? Sometimes you just get bored of looking at the same thing over and over and over. And it's a little bit different for, you know, viewers on a YouTube channel. Because you're not seeing it every single day. You're, you're seeing it only when, you know, people are live streaming or whenever you check out a, a video that somebody's watching or somebody put up. And so... 
it's it's just a lot different to experience the tank, you know, day by day and just watch it. And sometimes you just kind of get bored with the tank, bored with even the fish sometimes because they just kind of do the same thing all the time. And the plant growing up. Oh, there's actually two plants growing out the top. Uh, there's a spider plant on the right and then a marble queen pothos wrapping around the hang on back filter over to the left. And uh, yeah, it's just sometimes just redoing something just kind of sparks it back into into reality, into life. And what's up, Jimmy P and Geek Boy? More people kind of popping in here. Um this tank is starting to kind of settle in. Uh, it's been kind of dug out a little bit. Some So some of the uh, base layer is starting to kind of come through. It's okay. And then the, uh, the hang on the back filter, the water got a little low, and so it kind of pushed a little bit of the sand through here. So there's a little bit of a dip and whatever, but it's all kind of natural looking or whatever. It's not really coming through on camera super clear. But... Yeah, this uh, this tank is really settling in. Um, the variegated Anubius, uh, not not really doing. It, it kind of melted away, just kind of like what people said. They said it needs CO two. I thought, hey, maybe I can give it a go, but whatever. And then I also, I think I left it in the tissue culture a little too long. Uh, because when I did kind of break it out, there was an ever so tiny bit of like mold on it. And uh, I was just like, eh, I can just, you know, rinse that off and everything will be okay. And I mean, it's all probably kind of all layered together. It just didn't work out for this tank. So whatever. Um, the uh, the stem plants are doing really good. The uh, the The lily is adapting quite well. Everything else is doing pretty good. Um, that pink flamingo crypt is it kind of melted away almost completely. The roots are all still there. It is kind of in a dark spot because of the uh, that seam on the glass lid. Though I just want to keep a lid this time because it just keeps the water from evaporating so fast. And then, you know, I did lose one of my females' bettas just jumping out of there. Uh, unfortunately, but yeah, everything else is doing really, really good. Even the, uh, there's a tiny bit of Java moss on top of the rock there. And I, it pretty much completely dried out when I had the rocks in the bucket, when I did the rescape, but it seems to have just been, it seems to be just fine. So, all right. If I take you up the top. You can kind of see how the plants are kind of settling in. The lid's a little on the cloudy side. DD, what's up? And then I can take you guys down here. The, uh, the Java moss that I'm transitioning into brackish... It's not really coming through very well on the camera, but it is green. Like, it's it's looking halfway decent. So I'll probably actually put that into the tank here soon. Um, hi, everybody. Here's my cat and her butt. Um, <laughs> but the uh, the aqua garden is doing fairly well. Uh, all the, the mollies are doing pretty good. I'm still kind of barely feeding this tank. Uh, there's nothing I can do about the horrible glare, but I still like to show everybody this tank and the mollies that I got because you don't see those nice round dorsals very often. Most everything you see nowadays has the sail fin type dorsal. But I also have a new little buddy. Uh, the tank is still on the floor. I plan to get a little stand to kind of put him up right here and just use the window as a little bit of heat and stuff. But it's a uh, it's a golden gecko, and his name is Randall. 
um, because he spends most of his time actually with a purplish color, but he changes to gold. If I take the camera around the back side here, he likes to hang out on the underside of the wood during the day. I might break him out a little bit later to kind of show everybody. But yeah, a, a former coworker of mine had, you know, bought the golden gecko from the store and just um, kind of decided that he couldn't really take care of him anymore, was running out of space and kind of needed to downsize because he was moving into an apartment. And he knew I really liked the golden gecko. And I was the one that gave him the name Randall, like at the store even. And he decided he's like, that's a, you know, that's a good name. I'm going to keep the name. And uh, so now I have him. Uh, the golden geckos are super easy to take care of. They're like subtropical arboreal. So they just need like, you know, a 20 gallon high and they're totally fine. And just decent humidity, you know, like 60 to 70 percent. But, you know, they're they're omnivores that kind of go more towards the fruit side. So like crickets, mealworms. Uh, Rapashi, whatever. I have this like crested gecko food, this watermelon flavored with probiotics from Zoomed that I'm using. And they don't need a heat lamp for the most part because they are good with temperatures, you know, like 70 to 80 degrees or so. So unless you just keep your house really cold or you get like cool drafts and stuff like that, um, they don't need a heat lamp and they don't need a UVB lamp either because they're nocturnal. So they just hide during the day. They don't actually absorb any of the like sunlight or whatever in the wild. So they don't need that. So they're super easy to take care of. And I'm excited to have him. He's an, He's a cool little addition. I'm this is I just kind of rearranged some of the stuff that was in there. It's all fake and just random pieces of like cork bark and uh, I think that's like Mopani driftwood and stuff like that. I kind of plan to turn it into a bioactive enclosure at some point. Um, but then at that point I would actually need some form of a light whether it just be a, a cheap light or another, like that's just a simple like grow light up there that I have in like a standard lamp just going right over this tank and it's doing really good. So I could do that sort same sort of thing over this or maybe the sunlight will just give it enough with some pothos and some other things like that. So we'll see. I'll be painting the new fish building all black so there won't be any glare on the tanks while filming. That is a very smart move, John Oliver. Um, I don't know. I just I kind of like the lighter look in this room with the white walls. And uh, I'm going to have to – I'm kind of turning this room into like a whole kind of jungle eventually like i want to add a whole lot more live plants just kind of everywhere i just i'm gonna have to uh bring my lemon tree into here uh over winter and you know probably use like some different light and stuff like that i plan to maybe put like a a spotlight or something like right there in the corner and just have it kind of beam like right onto the uh the lemon tree or something because they need like a whole lot of light even in winter or they'll just die so i'll have to do something but speaking of the lemon tree i can take you guys outside and show you what's going on with that guy and if anybody wants to come up and join the conversation Please do. I need to mow my lawn, but I also just kind of like the crazy overgrown look. But yeah, my lemon tree, it's doing really good, actually. 
responded to the trimming quite well. It's branched out and bushed out like crazy. And yeah, that dryer is really working. It's kind of an old dryer. I, it kind of came with the house, so whatever, man. <laughs> But yes, it's a very pretty lemon tree. It's a variegated pink lemon tree. So for those of you that haven't heard about it, like the uh, the outside of the lemon's going to be, you know, kind of like that, kind of a, a yellow and green stripe. And then the flesh internal part of the lemon is going to be pink. What's up, Lori? Blackberries. The garden is completely like overgrown and stuff now. I've just gotten kind of lazy with it. But I do have a couple ghost peppers that are getting real close to picking time. And looks like I got a couple more scorpion peppers that are getting close to picking time. So that's nice. This little uh, pond here that I got still doing well. I uh, I took all the, the frog bed off because it just wasn't seeming to be doing very well anymore. I guess too much light to nutrient ratio or something. And uh, all those, the storms and stuff too just kind of were messing with it. And I'm missing one of the golden white clouds. I had four in here. Now there's only three. There's still the Florida flagfish. He's really, really tough to see. But if I kind of stir with the water a little bit, they all like to come up. Say hi. Yeah, the Florida flagfish. I saw him earlier. He's about like a full like inch and a half now, which is awesome. He's growing a little slow, but he's doing cool. Meyer lemons are great. They're a lot easier to to grow, and they're apparently like the best tasting lemon. But I just wanted to give a little bit something different a try, and I I like to go for things that are just a little bit different, you know. Like the carrots I'm growing are are rainbow carrots. So since it, the yard is kind of softer or whatever. Let me kind of get in here. See if I can get one loose. And please don't just happen to be an orange one. Ah. Well, it's a little st stubby carrot. <laughs> but it happens to be one of the white carrots. And then there's also like purples and oranges. And I think that was it. It was like white, orange purple and maybe like a yellow carrot too but I, I like the purple ones the best they all i mean still just taste like a carrot but there's a little bit of a difference in the flavor um, hold on a second i got I got people at work messaging me because they can't find something. Uh, hold on. I'm... Okay, do, do, do. Now, um, pond. Just uh, filled it up right before the stream, and it's looking really good. The, the waterfall is just kind of all just grown in, kind of how I was wanting it to. It looks really good for the rest of this year, but next year I have plans on redoing this whole. OK, 
okay. I don't know what happened there. Hopefully everything is still okay. But I plan on, since I'm not sure if it's something I did with remaking the waterfall or if there is just like a leak in the liner. But I love this pond. It's great. I did the math. It's like roughly like 200 gallons or so. But I still want to make it bigger. Because I do have a really nice koi in there that's all white. And he's, you know, probably about, including all of his... Oh, there he is, actually. He's getting decent size. Still plenty small enough to stay in here. But just his body itself is probably about six inches. And then he's got all of his finnage and stuff, too. But I want to basically... Just take what's existing and then just like cut it out even more to about here and then just like wrap it around here and have it then go back. So I have it kind of kidney shaped and then the waterfall, since I already have basically the pump like integrated into the ground, like the, the cord is like in the ground now. Uh, I don't want to move the pump, so I want to move the waterfall and have the waterfall basically trickle down this way and then have the stream kind of trickle back in and just get progressively deeper. And then this will still be the deep area of it. There will be kind of sh more shallow over here and just kind of trickle on in and just look like a more natural sort of, you know, little stream pond in my backyard. Because I didn't build this. All I did was build the waterfall. Um, this was a wa water garden that was put in. I, I'm not exactly sure what year, but when I bought the house in September 2019, it was here. And the lady was like, I have a pond. And so I'm not exactly sure when it was put in. Hey, Petro Man. Hey, Ray Aquatics. Any, anybody else I miss? I don't think so. The, uh... Oh, that's the, the driftwood from the former Betta Sorority. You can see, like, all the weird, like, white marks on it from the dead black beard algae. It looks like it has hair. It's kind of strange looking. Uh... But my elderberry is looking fantastic. The berries are still growing. I got, looks like a few of them are starting to turn color. I'll give those guys maybe another day or two before I pull them. Hey, Brian Fish Fam joined in too. How's it going? Man, it's hot out here. I'm going to go back inside. And it's so hot, that's another reason why I don't mow my lawn as much either. After being in Iraq and all that, like, I'm just done with heat. I don't want to work in heat anymore. I hate sweating. I've worked in warehouses and all that stuff too. Like, I'm just tired of heat, man. Uh, I'm one of those people I would much, much rather have cold over heat because you can put on more clothes. You can't just, you know, stop being hot. So the brackish tank, the java fern, not doing so hot so I took a lot of it out um, the water may just look a little strange right now though I'm surprised it's not more discolored than it could be because uh, I added a decent amount of erythromycin in here a full dosage or whatever not to treat the bumblebee gobies the bumblebee gobies are doing great 
It's uh, I've had a massive cyanobacteria breakout. There's still some on the rocks. I pulled most of it out, did a good water change on it, added the erythromycin, and you know, gonna let it sit for another day. And tomorrow I'm gonna do another big water change on it as well. Suck even more of that stuff out. So it's what you gotta do sometimes. This tank, all these babies are still doing great. They're growing pretty slow. Um, I think that's mainly just they're all just kind of crowded in here. I need to either uh like I need to get rid of some of these guys. <laughs> or get like another tank and that other tank isn't really happening anytime soon I'm kind of broke so I gotta kind of get rid of some of these guys there's just too many of them so and they're breeding too so if anybody wants you know a group of these guys there's several males and there's even more females so just let me know. Like, I'll just charge you for shipping. Fish are free, so. The tadpoles. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if everybody. Oh, Brian, they are actually hybrids of. OB peacocks and strawberry peacocks. So they're mainly like strawberry peacock looking, but they have a little bit of spots and stuff. Um, but yeah, the tadpoles, if if you didn't see my short that I posted, um, one of the tadpoles actually, you know, sprouted arms and legs and turned into a full polywog and was up on that little piece of wood there in the middle. Um so I put the whole enclosure inside this, like, 10-gallon and put that on there just to make sure that it couldn't escape. And uh, I was going to get some, like, micro crickets and flightless fruit flies the next day. Um, but then when I woke up, he was dead in the water. So I, I'm not really sure what happened, um, if it was something to do with, uh, like trying to get up here or something and fell or I, I really just don't know uh, what exactly happened and the only thing I can really think of is probably just needed food like instantly and I didn't have the food instantly I was hoping you know since I had it you know I have a couple gnats and stuff in my house I was hoping they'd just go in there and you know just he'd happen to catch them overnight or something like that but I don't know. I guess 24 hours was just too little time for that poor little polywog. But there's still one more tadpole in there. Um, he's right at the base of the pothos leaf on the side there, if you can see him right there. Um, he's got tiny little bitty legs, but no arms or anything yet. He's not really seeming like... He's growing quite as fast as the other one. Yeah, I know your peacocks just keep having babies and stuff over there, Brienne. Like, that's the issue that I ran into. Like, well, I, I say issue, but I got love it on one hand, but on the other hand, I'm getting, like, overrun with fish. <laughs> So, luckily, the breeding has kind of stopped for now, on my end at least. Um, but I do plan on uh, breeding these these betta still. Um, they got these really nice turquoise crown tails, male and a female. Um, they it, The colors is really dark because of the tannins in the water and there's no light or anything. There, you can see his colors now. He's really nice. I'm kind of working on still getting some weight on these guys, getting them growing up because the female's still just pretty small. Focus is terrible. Come on, dude. There we go. 
What's up, Brian? Detroit Shrimp and Aquatics. Oh, I don't know why Brian reminded me of it. Um, oh, and hey, Alishan, how are you? Um, but for those of you that don't know, uh, Mike with uh, Florida Fish Rescue, Mike and Elizabeth, um, they are getting put out of their house um, where they have the rescue. I'm not 100% sure on everything going on, but basically, like, Mike's brother is the one that, like, actually owns the house or something like that, and he's selling the house from under him, and it's already, like, sold, basically. So they have to, like, get out of the house, and it's quite sad and unfortunate. Um, so they are basically, like, saving up money for some place to go to like save their fish and all that because you know he wants to keep the rescue going he there's really not much he can do there's no other rescues down there and uh so he's he, he's basically accepting donations for anybody that wants to help uh and i mean you don't have to Donate if you don't want to. Like, I understand that. But, I mean, the fish fam, like, really comes together. And we, we help each other out when we're in need. And, I mean, seriously, like, five bucks really isn't that much as an individual. But, like, if 200 people donate five dollars, that's a $1,000. And, you know, that's a down payment. Or, like, that's a security deposit, at least, on an apartment or something. Like, it's something, like... Ricky, I don't I don't know if it was cold or warm that night when it died. But the my fish room tends to stay, like, 78... Well, kind of not 78, but, like, 76 to 77 degrees anyway. It stays warmer because of all the fish tanks and equipment in here. Um, but, yeah, it might have just been different because it was, like, exposed to the air. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, anything will help. Um, I don't have the link. If if there's anybody that can, like, drop the link for uh, Florida Fish Rescue, PayPal, or, you know, something like that, that would be great. You know, we can we can all use a little help sometimes, and they definitely need it, and their fish need it, and there's really not much other options that he has. Uh, he can't sell the fish. He'll lose his rescue license. Uh, he can't really donate the fish anywhere else because, like I said, there's no other rescues down there in Florida. Uh, it's pretty much like he doesn't want to just give all the fish to like Ohio fish rescue or somebody else necessarily. Like that's, you know, going from Florida all the way up to Ohio, these fish would probably like, I know they know what they're doing, but like, let's help Mike out. $1, $2. Like I said, you know, that's a pack of gum to you, but if we all do it, it's, it's a whole lot more to them. Uh, Patty, I don't, I don't know all the rules. I don't know all the details of everything, but I don't think he could auction off the fish. He might be able to sell other stuff like you know equipment fish food you know stuff like that because i know like okay like i don't i don't know like he he might be able to technically like adopt them out for an adoption fee and still be uh qualified as a rescue but you can't like technically sell the fish and you can't yeah that's that's kind of what i was saying like you can technically do like adopt a fish and do like an adoption fee 
and stuff like that. There's ways about it, but getting something like that organized, I, I don't know. There's a lot of these things are just kind of like short term fixes. Like he's looking for more of like a long term fix. He's trying to get himself set up somewhere else. Mr. J.P. Merlo in Kentucky. Yeah. I don't know. It's up to Mike. I, I kind of wish Mike was in this chat, especially since I'm talking to him, uh, talking about him right now. And I'm not sure if Mike has shipping material and all that. It would involve basically another rescue driving down with a pool or two and buckets and all that stuff and collecting up all the fish and driving them back to wherever they are. And he has to do something with all the tanks and some like, yeah. Yeah. Mike can ship. It's not that Mike couldn't ship. It's, it's that, yeah, he can't technically, like, sell the fish. He has to, like, adopt them out. What's up, Select Pet? What's up, Skipper? I don't think I said hi to you. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, Skipper. Who wants to mow my grass? And I do have somebody that offered, like, hey, I'll, I'll mow you grass. I'll even do it for free. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to have you mow my grass for free. I'll give you, like, 20 bucks or something. But I haven't called the kid to have him do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I think technically, yeah, he can adopt out the fry and stuff like that. What's cracking? Fishy biz. What's cracking? Let's see here. There's one of my Cynodonis loose pennies hiding in the plant. Uh, in the Java fern. And uh, up there behind the filter is my green phantom pleco. I don't want to be on camera. <laughs> Whatever, man. I like my green phantom pleco, but yeah, he always hides. What's up, little buddy? Adele? Is Adele in the house? I didn't see. Oh, there she is. Hey, Adele. What's up? And Lady Diane in the house. How's it going? So, I, now that, you know, I got a decent amount of people in chat, you know, I kind of asked the question to you guys. What do you do? To bring yourself out of that funk. You know, when things just aren't quite going right, when you're just not feeling happy with your fish tanks, even like happy with life necessarily, like how do you bring yourself back into, you know, reality when you, you know, I don't know, like. I don't want to say, you know, depression necessarily, but just down in a funk. When you're just kind of getting burned out on things. Research new ideas. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting one for sure. Oh, I have a guest. The biz. Ah, what's cracking? What is cracking, man? Man, in this classroom trying to get stuff together, I was going to 
try to put out a before and after picture, man. But I wanted to, uh, since you were on, I wanted to jump on real quick with you. Yeah. So you could, <clears throat> so you could see what I'm working with over here. Let's see if I can change, nice. change this camera. Oops, that's not changing. Trying to get better lighting. There we go. So oh, yeah. all right, let me start off. Let me start off from the beginning. We just got yep. this in. I was trying Pull to figure that out. Pull up on the, uh, the big screen here. <clears throat> so, all right. You walk in, boom, bow. Nice. Two fish no, tanks in I the back. We're all live with them. <laughs> you out here? Okay, all right. Later, person. So that's <laughs> my, that's my teacher desk, which I got to clear up. But I try to get these discs as much as possible. Here's my new turtle, Picky. Oh, nice. She just finished eating a nightcrawler. Oh, look at that. A little box turtle, huh? All right. So here's the 40. Wow. Yeah. So what's all in there? Huh? What's all in there? Those are all uh all my African cichlid fry that I had oh. in the in like three ten gallons at the house. I just put them all together in the forty. Nice. So, um, what type of fry do you have in there right now? So mostly OB, but then I have some fry that my sulfur head kind of snuck in on me. So uh, he oh, he okay. dominated for a for a couple of clutches and then the rest should be my blueberry OB fry. So nice. I had uh, some pretty decent OB females. So I'm looking for some decent color on these, on these, on these puppies. So. Well, Hey, if any of those OBs kind of grow out and you want to do like a swap or something, like. Sounds good to me. Get some different genetics with the OBs. And the 29 just has a couple of snails. I really just <clears throat> am going to turn it into the planet tank and uh, move my dojo loaches, my uh, rasbora, and um, everything that's in my 29 gallon at the house. I'm going to bring them on over in the here. Okay. Remember the sponges at the ACA? Yeah. Man, this mug is off the chain, dude. I love oh it. yeah, that's what's running in there. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. And I'm sure it's the same. I'm I'm pretty sure it's like easier, easy to DIY. But I just I just got a couple of them and just I'm loving it. So I did do my rack and hopeful for some twenty longs. But for now, I have these two tens that I got from the um from the um auction. And then uh, I could put 20 on bottom, 20 on top, or exchange the 10s for 20s. But for right now, <clears throat> I am thinking that if I fill this rack up, this 40, that 29, the 55 is going to go over there in that corner. And I do have possible room for something over here. I think that's all my principal is going to let me do. <laughs> <laughs> I have this space over here that I was actually just going to put plants in this in this little bowl out here and let it get yeah. some sunlight and let my plants grow out. Do you have but any shrimp? I don't, but uh, Jeffrey Watt said he would send me some. Joe's from the Shrimp Shack. I say um, I'm right here, and I got a whole lot of uh, blue velvet shrimp that look really nice. So uh, okay, all right, and well, they're then super I'll hardy too. So I'll 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 let you you know get like six of them or whatever and start breeding them in a little tank. Sounds good. And yeah, that'd be cool too. I haven't kept kept shrimp before, so I'll get the lowdown from you. And uh, what do you think I need? I put it in this tin or um, should I do a, a get a 20 for them? I don't think you need a 20 at all. I think a 10 that's just like heavily planted would do just fine. Okay. The more plants, the better. They're like they just love dense vegetation, 
and then once that tank like really establishes and stuff like i my shrimp tank i don't have to do any uh water changes on okay. like no water changes at all i i, I just top it off when it, the water starts to get low gotcha all right, I'm with it. And uh, let's see, is that a touch screen? Yeah, we just got these new touch screens in. Somebody just asked that. Switch my camera back around for a second and show my little shrimp tank here. But yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. I got a lot of little blue dream shrimp in there. Is that duckweed? Uh, there might be a tad of duckweed on top, but it's uh, what's it's the uh, four leaf clover looking stuff? And then stuff. hydrocotyl Japan trepartita. Okay. And yeah, it looks there's like, a little uh, bit of Java moss in there. I have an air plant on top and a marble okay. queen pothos. But yeah. there's there's a couple like ram's horn snails and maybe a few like pond snails in there. Sure. One of the ram's horns is actually like decent size too, but. Just a whole bunch of shrimp. Oh, there's some Rotala green in the middle as well. But like I said, I don't do... Oh, here's the, the massive ram's horn. <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't just, do any water changes. Yeah, it's like a gallon and a half little vase. Okay. And when the water gets to like here, I just top it back off. And the shrimp are doing just fine. Like there, There's like no nitrates, no nothing. It's got a really, really thick substrate, so it's it's just a super healthy little ecosystem. Looks dope. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Lady Diane won some of my blue shrimp, too. Yeah. I need – I know they make lids for um, 10 gallons. Are they always hoods, or do they actually have maybe a glass lid? Uh, we sell glass lids at Pet Supplies Plus for the 10 gallons. Okay, I might have to, um, because that's the only thing I'm probably going to see if I can, the next few donations I get, I'm going to get like 20s and lids because um, students came in today, it was freshman orientation, and so they came to their hour classes just so they know exactly where they're supposed to go Monday, and um, I've already, you know, had a classroom full and they were already going towards the fish tanks, but you just don't want those one or two wayward kids to just put their either fingers in it or anything like. So I'm definitely going to have to cover up. Um, yeah. So. And I'll I mean, you know, head, all the all the way. teenage girls that wear all their perfume and stuff too. Like, you don't want any of that getting into the tanks either. Right. Right. And with everybody doing hand sanitizer and stuff like that, you just that too, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's actually that's actually kind of an issue that I feel like you know with the super disinfectant world that we live in right now, like <laughs> people got to be really careful around their fish tanks, right? Yeah, it's true. So I'm covering them up. Um, and uh, even the tins on the rack, and uh, I'll probably get a get a I'll probably get like maybe some. I'll just do this. So this whole board, I'm gonna try to dedicate and put like maybe some African different African cichlids like Malawi, Tanya, Nikan, and just put it all on this blackboard. Oh, like the names or right, 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 right. And I think I'll I'll do the after school fish club I'll do it from this from this look here instead of from the front of the room cool yeah so yeah man I just wanted to pop in and, and show you what I was working with man so yeah you, that's you exciting could, um, man like I'm 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 glad you're doing what you're doing like keep up the good work because the right. world needs more teachers that are like doing more innovative stuff and trying to think outside the box to get these kids to learn more. Seriously. Class yeah. classrooms are too boring. It's a fact. It's a fact. And I told all my, my classes that I had today, I said, look, I'm a, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it entertaining for you guys. You guys are going to learn without knowing it. Trust me. That's what I do. 
And they were like, mm-hmm. that sounds cool. When they walked in, I was already playing like a little new edition, some boys to men and stuff. They were like, yeah. hmm. <laughs> and I was blasting it. Like people were walking through the hall, like, man, what are you doing? Shut up. I do this right. every year. <laughs> right, man. Because, I mean, yeah. if, if you get the kids excited to even just go into the classroom, then it makes the learning more fun. For sure. For sure. All the way. Oh. Well, bye, Drew. <laughs> it's really nice talking to you. Uh, I know you were probably getting ready to drop off in a second anyway, so have a great – oh, you got, I guess you're going to pop back up. There you are. Yeah, yeah I didn't know Wrong if I pressed button. it back. I would just leave everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, you coming you come through tonight at 9? You got a stream tonight at nine? Yeah, I put out a, a little trailer for Aquamate from Australia. He has to do oh. he has to do nine tonight with me because it's Saturday for him there. And my regular time, Monday, is like Tuesday in the afternoon for him. He's at work. Oh, right. <laughs> so, okay. Unfortunately I won't. I I on Friday nights I I, I go hang out with uh, a group of friends and just like play video games and just okay. hang out and do stupid stuff or whatever. That That's my Friday night. So sounds good. I'll sounds have good. to catch the replay. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, one night, only one night, you know what I'm saying? Just because it's a normal night that I wouldn't go on, but I had to get him on because me and Aquamate actually, it seems like we kind of started at the same time and he was way in Australia and we just kind of just, connected and he's been building and i've been building so i had to get an opportunity to get him it definitely sounds like a great show everybody listening be sure to check out fishy business stream tonight at is that nine central 9 p.m central 9 p.m central so that's 10 eastern and that's seven o'clock pacific and that's 12 in the afternoon australian yeah on On saturday Saturday. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Yeah, Sounds man. Good, so Drew. look, I'm gonna let you finish off. I appreciate it. Wanted to pop in on you. I will come see you probably sometime this weekend. Are you there this weekend when you work in? I'll be there on Saturday. I'm off on Sunday. All right. Sounds good. I might check in with you Saturday. We'll do something. Cool. All right. Thanks, Danny. No problem, Drew. I'll catch you later. All right. Peace out, everybody. All right. So when I normally stream, I kind of tend to run long. I tend to go like (laughs) three hours, which I guess for a lot of people that might not necessarily be long. But today is one of those days that I'm not wanting to go over people. I'm just kind of wanting to keep this one short. And I know that Chattanooga Ed and Lefty, I believe, are streaming next at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock my time, Central. Um, So I got just a few more minutes left. So if anybody wanted to pop up and say hi, you're welcome. Otherwise, if I can get somebody to share that upcoming stream that's coming up next. uh, Let's see. Yeah, they're going on a 410-ish. Okay, so they're going to be a little delayed, so I can push it a little bit longer. Um, let's see. Let me – let's go say hi to the parakeet, huh? Lazuli seems to be doing fairly well. I am 95% sure that he is a boy. I thought he was a girl, but I was ignorant to parakeet sexing at the time. Hey, buddy. Oh, thanks, Jimmy P. Sir Lefts a lot and Chattanooga Ed. I like that S. He always gets a little bit nervous when I have the camera on him. He likes to watch the live streams. He doesn't like to be on the live streams. 
let's see if I can get him to want to come out. Yes, yeah, so I was going off the color of the seer, and I didn't know at the time that a young parakeet will be pink. I thought females were pink and boys were girls. I mean, boys were blue. Wow, wow. Females were pink and boys are blue. That's what I thought. But now I've learned that boys, yes, they are blue, but pink means that they are too young to sex. Uh, females are kind of white, and then when they are uh, like fully sexually mature, they go to like a brown color, whereas the boys will be like a nice dark blue. But if you look close, okay, he's like, get the camera away from me. Um, if you look closely, you can see that his is kind of a purple, so it's going, it's going blue. He's definitely a boy. He does not like, yeah, females are brown. Younger birds are hard to tell. It's just true, man. When I took him to the vet, that's when I found out that he was like, oh, yeah, no, you're wrong. Pink is just a little baby. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. He's so cute, though. He's so cute, though. <laughs> anyway, it is now. Th oh, come here. Let's see if I can get him to come here without the camera showing on him. Because he just doesn't like it in his face. Yeah, he just doesn't want to be held right now, which that's okay. I'll just kind of let him out and about. Uh, find myself my chill spot. Rocco's fish, fo fish room. Later, Rocco. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, my parakeet can talk. Uh, Dee Dee, they can talk. Um, they're not necessarily, they're not as good as like macaws, and no birds are as good as the corvids. You know the the um. Oh, now you're super vocal and stuff. Um, they're not as good as the the ravens and the magpies and all that, but. They can talk. Um, look up. There's plenty of videos on YouTube of them having little conversations. Oh, pretty bird, pretty bird, you know, and stuff like that. They mainly do, you know, whistles and sound effects and stuff like that. But he's getting pretty good at mimicking like R2-D2 and stuff. And the more I talk, the more he just has fun and gets like vocal and stuff too, because they're very, very social animals. It's normally recommended to have two. Yeah, females are more difficult than the males. Budgies, I just have, or the males have, uh, you know, their song is part of what attracts the female and all that too. Okay, let me let me write that down, Lady Diane, because I am on my phone right now, and I can't uh... paper. Yeah. Okay. 
Got it. You don't have to keep it posted anymore if you don't want to. Ba -da 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 -da. Um, blue above the beak means boy, gray means girl. Well, it's actually more brown than gray. And it's called the sear, the nostril area. Come here. There you are. You want to go on camera? No? Of course you don't. Of course you don't want to go on camera. He'll jump on my hand and all that stuff, but as soon as I put him like right here, he's like, go away. Come on. He's just being He's being a tease right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You get them to learn through repetitive sounds and stuff like that. So uh, I believe it was Chubbs that said he had a parakeet that would cough like his dad and would sneeze like his mom. And uh, I've been playing like R2-D2 sounds and stuff like that. And he's gotten really, really good at the wolf whistle already. The... You want to be on camera? There you go. Hey, look at you. Look at you on TV. You want to say hi to the people? <laughs> He's so funny. Well, all right, well. Somebody dropped the link for Chattanooga Ed and left his stream again. And let's all get ready for that, okay? So one other thing I just want to kind of show people. Um, the place that I go to on Friday nights, uh, it's, it's my ex-fiance's mom and stepdad. And... I just love hanging out with them. They're great people. It's, you know, kind of medicine for each other after, you know, she died of a heart attack at 25, five years ago. And I don't know. But one of the things that is great about going over there and what helps, you know, with soothing, like, and uh, good with anxiety and depression and stuff like that is they have – a whole bunch of deer that come into their yard and they like feed them and stuff. And I've been able to feed the deer by hand. Uh, at least one that they call mama I've fed by hand before. And it's really great. Um, wow. People are dropping off like flies, <laughs> but I just wanted to show, I got a couple little videos here to uh, kind of say goodbye to everybody before the stream. So let me just show a couple of videos I have of these deer and the baby deer.
aren't they just the cutest little thing? It's just so, so centering and and calming, and it's just it's really good if you do have anxiety just to hang out with these animals. They're just so peaceful and just so cute and. Gosh, the deer that they have, they come around so often. They're just like little, well, not little. They're just like extra tall, lanky puppies. They're just so cute. And, you know, they get, you know, carrots and and little wafers and all different sorts of things, corn, whatever. They feed them like crazy. And I said, there's one deer mama that has been coming around for a few years now and she, we can actually feed her by hand uh, but the other ones they'll come up to you they'll get you know within a few feet of you but they won't actually reach out and eat from your hand you gotta you know just dump the bag of carrots out on the ground and they'll just start eating them and it's just so great I don't always feed the deer every Friday, but I go hang out with them like every Friday unless I'm at work. So that's why you don't really see me on the Friday night streams, which, you know, are what would probably be the popping streams most of the time. But anyway, I think uh, I think Ed and Lefty are going now. So let's all go ahead and hop over there. Uh the hashtag is going to be, uh, let's see, I, I'm typing it out, ha hashtag, oh dear, let's all head over to Chattanooga Ed and Lefty's stream. I'll see you over there. Have a great day, everybody.